Hello YouTubers, this is the Nubifier and welcome to Exposed, a series where I go beyond the standard review and compromise my warranty so that you don't have to. By seeing what components are used and the detail that's put into the design and the construction, we can quantify quality, durability, and the value for your money. Each component will have its own video to keep things simple. A search for Nubifier Exposed will help you find the other videos in this series quickly. The Thrustmaster Warthog Grip is in sold standalone, however, they're very easy to find used because they've been around for a very long time. It's sold as a working replica. According to the American Air Force, it's a faithful replica of the A-10 grip. This grip is made out of aluminum, and it weighs a ridiculous 1,030 grams or 2.2 pounds. If your belief is heavy equals quality, look no further. The grip usually starts out cold to the touch and then warms up to your hands, and it has a smooth textureless finish. There are minor visual gaps that are somewhat detectable by your hands, but all edges are nice and smooth. To gain access, you're going to need to remove one C-clip, but aside from that, the Warthog has nothing tricky about it. The grip is held together with very small metal bolts, not screws. Removing four 2.5mm Allens frees up the top. Removing the C-clip pulls out the pin, allowing you to remove the rest and split the body. The body splits into five parts, which interlock together, becoming one solid unit. I'm pretty sure this would void the warranty, but as it's very easy to reassemble in the exact start state, there's probably no way for them to actually know. The casting is very nice and of a very high quality. Steel bolts screw into aluminum, which means there's a risk of galvanic corrosion if your house is humid. Steel and aluminum will eventually bond. However, my grip is 5 years old and when I opened it, the bonding was very minor. This could be prevented by reassembling with blue thread lock or very light oil on the bolt. The circuitry is attached to the left of the grip on one main board. This one was stamped 2009. The buttons and hat switches are linked together with wires terminated by a plug. There are dabs of hot glue strategically located to secure wires and switches. Nothing would wiggle loose and nothing internally would rub or wear. The base mount is metal like the rest and attached with a single cap bolt ensuring zero flex. The grip went back together with the same close tolerances in the seams as if it was brand new. Some observations and then the score. The design is showing its age, but unless you drop it out of a second story window onto concrete, there's no cause for concern. Most see its weight as a positive, but mechanically it's a liability, placing an increased pendulum load on the gimbal. The further off center you move it, the more force is needed for the gimbal to return it. This means if you prefer a weaker spring, you may need to manually right the grip before releasing it. All switches are mechanical and I was surprised to see exposed rear of the hat switches. The triggers should last forever through millions of clicks. The maximum score for this series is 9, allowing for features that really stand out. All grips in this series are evaluated with the same weight. The quality of the material is 9 because the buttons are that good. The buttons feel and work like real mil-spec, and you would need to try very hard to break them without tools. The buttons work silent but have a tactile detent providing positive feedback. Quality of casting is a 10. Let's be honest, if you put 15 grips on the table and ask a set of random people to pick, they're going to always end up with a warthog. People actually smile and laugh when they pick it up for the first time, so despite my belief that a top-mounted weight is bad, I can't deny people's first impressions. The quality of the electronics is an 8.5 as everything is methodically laid out and secured where needed. The main trigger is very good. The quality of the hat switches are great but a bit mushy, and none of the switches have any risk of accidental input. There are no special features, no analog mini stick, no analog brake lever, and no twist axis. The Warthog has become a bit of a base model feature-wise as newer sticks have hit the market. Engineering is a solid 7.5. Inside and out, it's very clear that careful consideration went into its design. Longevity for this grip is a 9. Nothing here gives me any impression that it would ever fail during years of normal use. Everything looks quite great about the Warthog grip. It's simple and it gets the job done. This is an ongoing series of short videos that I'm working on, so please subscribe and stay tuned. If you don't agree with my evaluation, please let us know in the comments so we can be better informed. Thank you very much for spending your time with me. Fly safe and I'll see you in the verse.